Hello, powerful one. Welcome to this edition of Inner Growth to Sezwa Elimi Hay. We really do not know that the more we hold on to that which is not life, the more we hold on to that which is accidental to life, we cut life off our existence. We actually, by that, detach from life. Life is not stagnant, but it is when we hold on to the byproduct of its existence. We are stagnated when we hold on to its byproducts. The capacity to let go is the capacity of power. Every single one of us have it on our inside. When we exercise it, we become beings of power. We become impregnable, indescribable, and then we expand. What are the things actually that make it impossible for us to actually experience life? They are the inability to let go. Sometimes we may forgive. We may say we have forgiven somebody. We have overlooked the event, but we have not been able to let go of the story. We keep talking about the story. We keep reinforcing it. Each time we tell these stories, we are reinforcing the events and the occurrences. Each time we remember these events and talk about them, we are waking them up. Don't forget that when we talk, we talk by expending energy. Therefore, when you are talking, you are sending energy to the event you are talking about. It is always best to talk about beautiful things that have happened in your life. How things have been sweet. How people have been kind and lovely to you. If you are talking about anything, you are reinforcing it. If you are thinking about anything, you are reinforcing it. If you are having a feeling about anything, you are reinforcing it. But of course, when you think, you feel. How you know that you are thinking is that you have a feeling. Every feeling has a corresponding thought driving it. Now, to change your life, restrict the stories you allow. If you remember an event that made you sad, an event that gave you an ill treatment, the safest thing for you to do is to send blessings to the event and the inventors, okay? The characters in the event that made the event possible. Send them blessings. If you feel bitter about it, if you feel really saddened about it at the time of remembering it, understand that it is your duty to forget. Forgetting an event is not the same thing as not remembering that it happened. That is not the idea. To forget an event is to forget the negative charges that are embedded in it. You have to let that charge go. So that when you remember it, you will not feel the charge that is behind it, the negativity. Because that energy is what requires more from you for it to flourish, for that story to keep going on. But why do we need to forgive? Why do we need to forget and let go? What is the benefit in it? Well, we will go into this when we come back from this break. I am Oseizwa Anthony Elimihe. You know me. I am in the game of helping you grow from inside out. That is the game. back. Yes, why do we need to forgive and forget? Remember, forgiving and forgetting is not exactly fully in favor of the person you are forgiving and forgetting. It's not even in favor of the event that you are forgetting. What you are doing by forgiving and forgetting is cutting off the characters and the possibilities of those events happening again in your life. That's what you're doing. Because that which mind dwells on that which mind remembers grows. It expands. Your duty is to remember that which you want to expand in your life. Your duty is to remember that which you will be happy to embrace. Why don't you remember things that make you joyful? Even if you don't have them, invent them. You are a creator. Invent them and focus your attention on those things regularly. If you don't have the right people in your life right now that will give you the kind of satisfaction, the kind of company that you desire, 
that you and I tell you you deserve anything you desire. Therefore, what you should do is to invent such people. I am loaded with benefits every day because I am aligned to life. All beneficial agents of life are aligned to me. The path through which such agents should walk into my life are cleared. I have a welcoming spirit. I develop a welcoming spirit. I grow good because my life is a field of goodness. My life is a field of positivity. My life is a field of beauty. All agents of beauty find pleasure being with me. All things that are meant for good, for prosperity, for progress, find peace with me. They are happy to be with me and they haste towards me every day, every moment of my life. I am a friend of that which is beautiful. I am a friend of that which is wholesome. I am a friend of that which is comely. I am a friend of that which is beneficial to life. I make life more beautiful by my allowances, by my thought, by the things that I remember, by the things that I do. I am a beauty to behold. I am of the beauty of the supreme, of the divine. All is well with me. All that has ever happened in my life until now, they are blessings. They are elevators and I see them as such. I create the ability to see good in all that has happened to me because only good happens to me. This world that I live in, this lifetime that I am circulating is loaded with blessings, with purity and joy. I am healthy, I am worthy, and I am wealthy because I am in the good books of the divine. Learn to assert that which you deserve, that which you desire out of life, every moment of your life. As you go to bed, assert it. As you're waking up, assert it. And by so doing, you are confirming the life that you have chosen. You know what they call a groove? A groove is the path that animals walk in the jungle. The jungle is a vast place. Animals don't just walk freely. They choose a path that they walk. Once in a while, they stray out of it because there is something outside it. Once they take that thing, they come back to it. But animals walk a groove. And that groove becomes engraved with their footsteps with their movements. And the human mind is so good at grooving. When you create a groove, when you suggest to mind that it should leave the groove, it sees it as tedious. For mind, that is akin to dying. It is danger to mind. Therefore, create a groove for your mind. And don't create a groove for things that are negative. Don't create a groove for things that are sad. Create a groove for good things. This is why you see some people are filled with sad stories and sad news because they don't have any other way. They have developed a groove for sad stories and that is what they know how to tell. And then their lives are filled with such things. The story you tell is the reality that you create. Now learn to forgive. The ability to forgive and let go of an event that is unsavory is your own power. It's your own seed of growth. Some people say, I have forgiven, but I can't forget. It's a lie. Forgiving someone, yeah, you may forgive the person, you can still be operating with the person, but you see what? That character of that person that led that person to behave to you, the way that person had behaved to you, will perpetuate because you have not let go of the charges. You have to bleed out the charges. You know what it means for you to have a boil? The boil is swollen, of course, and you are feeling it hammer you heavily with pain. When you puncture it, you see, to puncture it is hard. It is painful. You don't want to even think of it. Sometimes you close that in like that. But once you bore that hole in and you punch it in, the, the bile, the evil, the pus comes out of it. Oh God, you feel relieved. And in a matter of hours, maybe a day or two, the thing heals and kicks off. And that's the end of it. But if you leave it, it will keep spreading. Meanwhile, your body is rejecting it, but you are not letting it out. But somehow, it will find a way to bust in the wrong place. Yeah, you might, you might wake up one day, your best spread is stained with it, it's, it bust in them. So, don't keep negativity in. Let negativities bleed out. And by letting them bleed out, it's not by 
talking about them. You know, people say, if I don't say this thing, it will come out of my mind. That is not how to relieve yourself of negativity. You sit down quietly and affirm the opposite of the negative events. By so doing, you liberate yourself from the powers of that negativity because negativity is a non-entity. So, talking about them is not the way of getting them out, but talking about them is a way of affirming them. It's a way of creating them, of perpetuating them because non-entities can only come into existence by being talked about. A creator of a story knows what I'm talking about. If you are a story writer, until you have told a story, it doesn't exist. Once you tell that story and there's a third party to listen to that story, the story is, is created, it becomes real until it is told non-existent. So use that understanding to create the life of your dream. Talk about that which is beautiful, that which means well for your dream life, for your progress. Yes, the reason people are not really able to forgive and forget is because they do not see themselves as a point in the stream called life. They see themselves as the end of it. Now, life begins with me and ends with me. That is not how it goes. This word is what my people call ukoki zagelen. There's a game we play in the village. You have this pad, pad of cloth, you wrap it, and people sit either in cycles or on a straight line. Somebody starts it and is tossing it and then tosses it out. The next person catches it and he tosses it just like he says, this pad of his zagelen, ukoki zagelen, that it will never fall from my hand. It must go from me to another person. It can only fall from the hand of a thief. Okay, so you keep trains. Nobody wants to be seen as a thief. Nobody wants to be seen as one under whose watch the Okoki Zagelen falls down. Our lives are supposed to be a continuum. Therefore, when things also get to us, they must continue. They must go beyond us. They must go out. I'm not saying that when bad things happen to you, you must spread it low. When bad things happen to you, they stop with you. You don't let them spread. Because evil ends with me. Good flows through me. I don't damn evil, but I stop evil because evil is a non-entity. If I don't give evil my energy when it gets to where I am, somebody's energy propelled it to me. But when it gets to me, I deny it my energy. I deny it energy. And when I deny it energy, it will soon be expended because the energy that brought it to me will soon wear off. Therefore, it ends there. So, life with me is purity. Good things come to me and flow through me, empowered, strengthened, and multiplied. That's how they go. That is the life I have chosen. And that is the life you have chosen. Live it and you will be happier for it. And I want you to understand your life is like a stream. It flows into the bigger water and it flows with the bigger water into the ocean. It is not stagnant. If you allow your life to become stagnant, it means you have seen your life as a container, a well, a pond. So when things enter the pond, they are stuck in that pond. And the pond is subject to the season. When it is raining, the pond has water. When it stops raining, the pond is caked up. That is not the life you want to live. Sometimes two ponds are subject to ownership. Somebody can own a pond, but nobody can own a stream. It is for everybody. It flows, it travels a length. You can decide to say, okay, because you, you bought land at a portion, so you own that portion of the stream. That's your headache. You're only owning, but it's really not yours. It flows on because you, your ownership cannot damn that stream. It, it will consistently flow. Don't let the story of people own you. Don't let the irresponsibility of people own you. Don't let the bad habit of people own you. Be free of people's actions be free of people's characters you are one boundless entity that is destined to expand the moment you stop expanding you start dying you start being owned by people and being defined by people like the pond when there is no rain the owner can decide to come and pour water inside so when the water comes out you are happy you are, you are filled up you say okay i have water now but when the owner does not put in water you don't have water that is not your life your life is the life of a stream, perpetually flowing. Let go and let life flow through you. You are so beautiful. Don't let anything uglify you. Don't let anything make you ugly. That's what I mean. So, what more can a brother say to a beloved one?
but this. The life that you seek is within you. The moment you begin to allow external forces to condition you, you kill that life. You stifle that life. Until you let go of the events of the past, the freshness of life will not flow into you. Let go of the things you have enjoyed. Let go of the things you have endured. They must flow past because you are a being. You are perpetually evolving. You are the stream. You are not a pond. You are not a lake. You flow. You just flow. That is who you are. And then growth is your nature. If you are not growing, you are not being you. Inability to forgive makes you not to grow and therefore it denies you of your heritage. It denies you of your person. That's all. God bless you.